Now, um, I'd like to introduce Otto Nero um, in his role as NDS product manager. He's also working at NNG, but uh, today talking about his uh, NDS product management role. And uh, yeah, please give us insight into the, the roadmap. Um, so what's to come? And I hope that the wishes that have been raised during the panel discussion are mostly reflected, but you can uh, give us the details here. Yeah. Right now. Good. So, um, Otto Nierer, product manager of the NDS Association. Actually, I am from uh, NNG, but here today I'm, I'm representing the, the uh, NDS Association and the product definition group. So, um, and my presentation is about roadmap. So, what is roadmap? Roadmap is about, it's a high level representation of the product strategy over time and how we plan to get there and uh, how we define it. So we have a product definition group. It's a board, uh, a group of, of people, mainly product managers delegated by the uh, NDS members. And we define um, the what and why. So what uh, Christoph mentioned, the task of the, the product managers, um, what? So we defined uh, long-term strategic objectives and, and key focus areas. This is to, uh, to, to realize the NDS vision. Um, we always, let's say, track what is the market trend that also helps us to define the what um, and the requirements from the uh, NDS members. So we need to understand what are your problems and we need to work also on business cases. It's mainly for the why. So why we need to focus on certain uh, uh, topics. Um, sometimes we conduct uh, surveys and uh, we also attend conferences that helps us to, to identify what is the real trend, what is the, the pain points of the, the industry. And uh, input is coming also sometimes from uh, the cooperation activities like ODF or uh, recently uh, OUTSAR. So these are the six, um, let's say, themes, NDS themes. We call it as a, a long-term uh, strategic objectives or key focus areas to realize the NDS vision. NDS vision was presented by Martin Schleicher. I don't want to repeat it but how to realize the NDS vision. So we need um, um, a focus areas. And in the past we have quite a lot, but now we reduce it into these uh, six items. So it's, it's about autonomous mobility, IVI. So how to provide maps, how to map provision, autonomous mobility requirements and IVI. Software defined vehicle is a new item. So that's uh, uh, one of the biggest challenge right now in the industry. And we would like to understand uh, what is the context, the map context and how NDS Life can contribute to software defined vehicle. E-mobility is clear, um, uh, safe mobility. It's all the aspect of the map regarding safe mobility. And then finally the smart mobility. Um, let's start with the autonomous mobility. So it's all about how to provide maps for others and uh, uh, automated driving systems. Let's start first with the trends. Um, I recently attended an autonomous driving conference and, and uh, this was one of the uh, interesting input that the members, the company started using a completely different taxonomy so not the uh, standardized one, which is uh, defined by SCA. We all know these uh, six levels, um, but most of the companies started using a new uh, taxonomy. They call it as a product uh, uh, driven taxonomy because it turned out that the end user doesn't really understand the uh, SCA levels. So what is defined by standardization? So they need, uh, a more product closer uh, taxonomy and it's all about uh, hands, uh, I mean, using uh, eyes on, eyes off and hands on, hands off combination. 
So that's that's sort of one of the interesting uh, uh, trend. And um, business model for robot taxi seems questionable. So um, there is a or there was a quite a big hype around uh, uh, robot taxis. So L4 uh, autonomy in in uh, urban uh, domain, but then uh, the question is how to make money how to make profit on, on uh, robot taxis. And uh, um, it's right, uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, questionable. So um, there is also a, a consolidation in the, uh, on, the, on the market. So uh, it's quite easy to prototype certain uh, uh, automation levels, use cases, but when it comes to scaling or monetizing, this is very challenging and that's also an interesting trend here that um, um, companies started shifting back the focus to lower level um, uh, automation, actually to make first profit, make profit to, to have uh, investment for the higher level uh, automation then. And when it comes to higher level automation, um, Automated trucks or autonomous trucks seems one of the the use case or uh, yeah use case where the business model seems justified, and uh, so that's also one of our focus uh, uh, on our roadmap, and uh, that's also an interesting item here. The sc uh, scaling HD map maps is is uh, challenging, so for lower level uh, automation uh, companies are relying mainly on on. Uh, uh, crowdsource uh, HD maps, but when it comes to higher level uh, automation, then they need uh, uh, surveyed uh, maps, but they need to be scaled uh, globally. Then that's that's uh, a big challenge in the industry. What are the geographical domain of the autonomous uh, uh, mobility related to the maps? So here, uh, where uh, let's say NDS lives comes into the picture. And these are the domains, um, highways only, highways, arterial roads, rural roads, urban, and like parking. Um, all of these uh, items were uh, already discussed in, in NDS Live, also in a product definition group. And we can say that all of these uh, domains are supported by NDS Live already, however, uh, new use cases are emerging all the time. So we need to keep an eye on, on uh, the requirements and the new use cases and to make sure that uh, maybe we need to uh, add additional uh, feature development uh, to enable these kind of geographical domains. Um, now let's uh, go to the uh, roadmap items for um, uh, autonomous mobility. Uh, we define roadmap uh, in three years uh, uh, timeline. I will mainly talk about uh, the roadmap items that we uh, identified for this year. One of the items is the ODD uh, topic. So first we would like to, let's say, get familiar what is ODD and what is the aspect to NDS, NDS Live. And NDS Live for ODD awareness is, is one of the use case where we think NDS Live can contribute to this topic. So it's about that uh, when ODD is defined, it needs to be monitored uh, uh, in real time. And that's where, let's say, an NDS Live uh, uh, map service can come in, into the picture, but it needs also a coherence between uh, uh, NDS Live and ODD. So most probably we need to, to somehow uh, 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 follow up with the ODD standardization as well. Um, next, autonomous tracking. Um, the business case is here that uh, only level four automation can solve the real pain points of the uh, freight companies to get the driver out of the cabin. Um, there are two business models, platooning and have to have, and it seems have to have uh, is the real candidate to uh, have the first commercial level for autonomous tracking uh, uh, solution on the market. 
So that's why uh, we would like to elaborate over the requirements and the customer needs required uh, to en that enables this uh, autonomous track, uh, tracking tracking uh, uh, use case. Simulation. Um, I'm really glad that we had this uh, Q&A uh, session regarding simulation. Um, last year, we had uh, quite a lot of discussion in the product definition group and also in, in uh, various boards as well. And then we came to the conclusion. Uh, um, so we have the NDS Classic Open Drive Converter, but then let's put it in the maintenance mode. Um, lane led to that was raised in the in the, in the product definition group. There is a need to provide certain simulation use cases when the data needs to be somehow manipulated, and for that, lane led to is a good candidate. But then the decision was that uh, instead of going into the uh, converter approach, let's extend this GeoJSON export uh, functionality with an import one. So uh, the members can easily export uh, HD map into GeoJSON, import the GeoJSON in any uh, tool that is capable of, of dealing with also Lanelet 2 format. Um, and then uh, import it back to NDS. So that's, uh, uh, um, I think a POC development is, is, is ongoing in this direction. And finally, NDS Live Open Drive Converter. Why? I think Christoph, uh, Christopher uh, uh, justified the need for this uh, kind of converter, and we would like to offer it also for the members. So that is a, a, a POC development already started. Um, next, IVI. Um, in the panel discussion, I think uh, uh, it was a good indication by uh, Harman that uh, uh, we started in NDS Live uh, the HD maps, the lanes, and, and other use cases. Um, but IVI is a key um, to, make a to make it as a success uh, story. And IVI, mainly navigation, is the core profile of NDS. So NDS, navigation data standard. Um, but IVI is not only about uh, navigation. So it's, um, I listed hybrid and online navigation. But also um, services is around uh, navigation, um, AR uh, use case. Um, entertainment, gaming, and, and uh, uh, yeah. Quite a lot of new use cases uh, popping up. Um, trends in the navigation um, might sound interesting. Um, at least this is what I see from the market. OEMs are either selecting Google Gas or looking for a gas alternative. If they go with gas, then that's an integrated Google Maps or integrated ways. Um, and if OEMs don't want to go into that direction, but their customer is looking for the same look and feel, then there are, this is the new uh, approach that uh, Android Automotive OS enables, these automotive uh, uh, app stores. These are the three main uh, uh, players on the market. And uh, customers can offer the uh, navigation applications for these app stores. But when, when, it, when it comes to different display outputs, and, and it's not only about the central IVI screen, but also using navigation in cluster display and also in a head up, head up uh, display, it might require a fully integrated navigation application where navigation technologies remains uh, uh, important. So uh, what are the roadmap that we defined for IVI? Um, let's start first with the best practices. Um, so finally, we have uh, specified in NDS Live all the um, uh, IV, um, hybrid navigation, uh, let's say, uh, modules that requires for modules. But we 
still need a best practice or a user guide how best to develop or use NDS Live modules, uh, smart layers, or, or uh, different services. And we have, I mean, NDS Live enables application service, smart layer service, or Firestore approach. So these three uh, fundamentally different approach to provision uh, the maps for hybrid navigation and all other applications as well. And we just simply listed all main hundred, uh, navigation functionalities and use cases, and uh, which use case uh, can be provisioned by application service, by smart layer service, or by Firestore. Um, I think the, the user guide will be available soon uh, in the developer portal. Then augmented reality. That's a new trend in IVI. So uh, customers, OEMs, are, are looking for the next level of uh, user experience. And AR can deliver it. But we would like to see uh, what, which, yeah, what augmented reality use cases has a uh, uh, map context. And, uh, whether it makes sense to use NDS Live interfaces to enable uh, augmented reality. And uh, revised scope of NDS Live, that's also a topic for this year. It was indicated from the certification part. So when it comes to commercializing uh, uh, solutions that they would like to know uh, which part of the ecosystem needs to be certified. Let's put it, this diagram in a little bit bigger, and then uh, start with the smart layer service interface. That's the most common approach. So accessing uh, uh, the data layers that is uh, residing in the cloud, smart layer service is fetching these data layers and providing uh, smart layer ties, paths, objects. Smart layer client is not standardized by NDS Live, but NDS Association offers um, a reference implementation for the smart layer client, which is in charge of uh, fetching uh, smart layer ties, paths, or objects from the cloud. Uh, smart layers can be used uh, instantly, immediately, or cached. And caching mechanism is, again, not standardized, so it's up to the application providers how they uh, implement it. If there is no connectivity, then NDS Live offers a solution to pre-install certain, uh, uh, pre-install the smart layer. This is called smart layer Firestore. Um, when it comes to, let's say, search, routing, or horizon, uh, this can be an application service. And in NDS Live, the application service interface is standardized, so hard to request. Uh, uh, application data from the cloud. And this application service might need to get also the smart layers from a smart layer service. If there is no connectivity, um, and for hybrid navigation, offline fallback search is a, is a real a use case, then the approach here is to use the same, let me go back, to use this interface also for offline fallback. Um, we don't standardize it, it only the, the interface and the approaches use the same interface for uh, this use case. Software defined vehicle. So it's about cloud and interface technologies for continuous optimization of the vehicle. This is one of the hottest topic in, in uh, most of the conferences. Um, the, the automotive industry is undergoing this, uh, this major uh, transition. Uh, towards the software-defined uh, vehicle uh, approach. And we would like to understand uh, what is the, let's say, the NDS Live aspect. Uh, is there any requirement uh, from this software-defined vehicle to NDS Live or how we can contribute with the standard? Um, one of the items that we identified here is the NDS Live for in-vehicle transport protocols. So we would like to 
use the same interface inside the vehicle that we use also accessing data in the cloud. Um, but it requires a completely different uh, transport protocol. And AutoSAR uh, is widely used uh, to enable a software-defined vehicle. So I think that's the very good uh, direction. And some IP, the transport protocol, is, is one of the success story of the adopted uh, AutoSAR. So it was a, a straightforward uh, decision to go into that direction. But in the PDG, we also would like to understand uh, what else can be used uh, inside the vehicle and what other protocols can help, uh, let's say, NDS Life to contribute to the software defined vehicle. The other topic is the interoperability. So, uh, for software defined vehicle, it's very important to use uh, solutions that is interoperable. Uh, it's not only about interoperability between NDS Classic and NDS Life. But, for example, using the same interface uh, for cloud services and for uh, in-vehicle net distribution. E-mobility. So it's clear that uh, uh, the future is electric. Um, but uh, what are the, the pain points of the uh, EV drivers? So we need to understand uh, their problems. Um, range anxiety and, and, and uh, charging anxiety is, is one of the two main uh, challenges of the uh, e-mobility for the uh, e-drivers that can be solved by maps. So we need to understand uh, uh, the problems and we need to see if the specification uh, covers all these use cases or enables all these functionalities. So we need, uh, our plan is to revise the specification and to make sure that all the use cases, all the features that uh, solves these pain points uh, are covered in the specification or what else needs to be added. Safe mobility. It's not just about safety. It's about using maps in a safe way. Uh, using maps for safety uh, applications. Safety uh, is also about uh, homologation, type approval. So most of the regulations are related to, to safety, privacy, and security. It's not just cyber security, but also data security. And, and these are the topics that we plan to uh, uh, elaborate in this uh, context. Smart mobility, it's mainly about uh, um, getting familiar with the context of NDS and smart mobility, like uh, the intelligence transportation uh, uh, domain. CITS, so uh, cooperative ITS. Uh, it was presented on the ORDF meeting that uh, CITS is part of the uh, ORDF ecosystem. So it certainly has some aspect uh, for NDS. Um, we need to understand the pain points of the, the CITS companies. Uh, CITS needs maps. They, they uh, try to standardize maps for, for CITS purpose, like this uh, local dynamic map, uh, map, but it has not been widely adopted. And that's one of the pain points. So I, I always, when, when I attend these the ITS work congresses, uh, this is one of the message from the, the ITS uh, companies that they need maps and this local dynamic map uh, is not the best approach for them. Um, in NDS Live, we have quite a similar concept. So we, we can also deal with static layers like here. Uh, dynamic layers and, and live layers. So somehow NDS Live is designed uh, to meet also these kind of requirements for uh, the CITS uh, industry. The other use case um, or the other pain points of the CITS industry is that uh, how to model um, junctions 
with traffic lights. So they, they designed this uh, spat, uh, spat map uh, approach. Um, each lanes are somehow uh, connected to the uh, uh, signals and signal phases. And when a car is approaching, then uh, they need to provide this kind of information somehow to the car, to the other system, for example. But this is absolutely not interoperable with, with the IVI or other systems. So they simply use um, geo coordinates, that's all. So this is certainly not the best approach. And here we would like to also understand better uh, how NDS Life can uh, help these uh, uh, CITS companies. Right, and um, here you can see um, all the, the uh, roadmap items uh, that we uh, defined on high level. Um, this year is quite fully packed. Hopefully we can manage or uh, some items were already shifted from, from last year, but uh, we certainly need contribution from you. We want to understand your problems uh, and make sure that we focus on the right problem. So that's why it's important to be part of the product definition group. Uh, last, yesterday I talked to ZF and, and they are willing to, uh, as a new member, they are willing to, to participate. Today, uh, Interians uh, told me that uh, they are also willing to participate. So it's really important to get uh, the feedback from you. And this PDG, this product definition group is a board to where we can have this discussion and, uh, and make the decision on, on, uh, uh, on the right roadmap and setting the right uh, priorities uh, for the uh, development. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Otto for this um, very detailed and uh, clear uh, summary and outlook what we are working on NDS. So I don't think we will have the problem of running out of items uh, on, on our roadmap anytime yeah. soon. Otto, stay, stay here because there's an online question at least. Yeah, just so um, yeah, I wanted to give uh, if, uh, you some opportunity for questions. And as we now have an online question, Marcus, if you can read it out. Yeah, it's uh, is NDS looking also into Coveza, into the Coveza VSS project for communication with Ottosa. Ottosa and Coveza works now on vehicle API concept to expose vehicle data to the cloud and various services. Do you see that NDS can take a similar approach? Yeah, um, so, so Coveza is, is also, um, let's say, it, it is on our plan to understand uh, 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 what is Coveza is doing, uh, what are the problems that they are solving and, and uh, um, they are also active in this uh, software defined vehicle uh, domain. Um, but first, we wanted to justify that this is related to, to, to the NDS uh, discussion and, and find the right uh, aspect uh, of it. Yeah, and to add, I mean, um, when it comes to um, sending sensor data or vehicle data that uh, somehow relate to, to maps or position from the vehicle, then um, this is not in the uh, uh, actual scope of NDS. This is something that, for example, would fit into the Sensoris um, Association. So we need to be clear about um, also the use case and the scenario. So if the, the one who raised that question has specific use cases in mind, that would really help us. Yeah. Okay, there's a question from John. What kind of use cases are you looking into when you're talking about in entertainment? So that first that's sounds contradictory to a navigation data standard or consortium. So what is it? So it's a, a very good uh, uh, observation. It was raised in the PDG and it is indicated uh, by e-mobility uh, use case. So when uh, 
the EV driver is stopping at the charging station and uh, maybe there are no facilities around. Uh, they need to uh, stay in the in a car and there are games that they can play on, on the uh, IVI screen or uh, using the cluster. Um, but what about to using a game that is related to the root? It has some, some map aspect related to the road ahead. Uh, and that's the idea here, mainly, to, uh, to use the maps that is used for IVI or used for, for uh, uh, other uh, use cases. And can they be also used uh, in this gaming uh, approach? while the, the car is standing, or uh, also for autonomous uh, uh, use cases, but it's, it's mainly triggered by the, the e-mobility. Well, we, uh, yeah, the, the, it is scheduled for next year, and indeed we would like to understand uh, what is the use case and justify it before uh, uh, we go into that direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, hope this answers. And maybe if you have some follow-up thoughts, we can discuss them. Carmen. Yeah, hello. Uh, actually, I just have an addition to what you said, and I can just underline what you said, because I have uh, both family and a lot of friends that drive a Tesla, and they are often queuing with the uh, with the charging stations and I asked them like what do you do during that time like I mean you would need to drink a lot of coffee right and for instance my brother he said yeah usually I play games yeah and one game uh, that you just mentioned I think that makes a lot of sense because also I played this when I was younger with my brother it's like racing right and for that you use the maps that you could race against the computer and I mean it's it's heavily used yeah so I think it makes a lot of sense yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah just for completeness the you have this racing game in Tesla while it's standing and charging so if you haven't been in a Tesla Sandu so I think I have an answer I mean um, in Harman we already implemented in the past something similar exactly for this use case it was not entertainment it was more like an inference engine so basically if the driver it was stopping somewhere we were searching around position and we we're proposing activities which could be correlated with the um, the time needed for the charging okay uh, but we implemented this use, using imperative programming this could be evolved into a uh, real inference engine use the artificial intelligence to to make better uh, better proposals mm -hmm. but gaming and watching movies this could be also an uh, an interesting uh, uh, option as well however um, i noticed you mentioned about uh, uh, gas and the uh, waste and so on um, have you investigated in the pdg also the impact of the digital market um, act because the European Commission uh, it will have pretty soon some uh, like regulatory aspects also in this uh, in this area, which will impact uh, the adoption of gas and uh, and ways. Because currently in the gas license, or I think they, they already modified, but they were uh, only Google Maps could have been the default application. No other navigation application it is allowed to be emphasized um, uh, more than Google Maps. Um, in the status bar, in that link, you can have only Google Maps linked to the icon and not another application. The user was not allowed to uninstall the, the application. So all these aspects. So have you investigated also what will be the impact of the digital markets? Uh, not really, at least not, not in the PDG. Um, um, it was in the section of the trends. So what is the trend in the, in the, in the navigation and, and what we see? Um, uh, but actually, uh, so that's a good observation, and, and uh, we also really miss uh, Harman in this uh, product definition group. <laughs> so I really encourage uh, uh, Harman to, to be part of it, to get these, these uh, really good uh, observation for uh, creating the, the right roadmap. Yeah, good. Thank you. So if there are uh, no further questions. Got last chance to raise your hand. Um, okay, thanks again, Otto. Great work and yeah, looking 
ahead, then uh, and what we can report to be implemented already next year in the next uh, uh, public conference.